What's going on everybody? Metaverse Josh here. Today I'm bringing you a much anticipated tutorial video on how to create drivable vehicles in Spatial.io. So just to start off, I'm going to let you know right off the bat, I had a lot of trouble with this one at first, but I got some help from the devs over at Spatial and they helped me get this figured out. I sort of felt like a noob once uh, I found out what the problem was. So I'm going to hopefully teach you how to get your vehicle drivable and spatial without any of the issues that I had. Um, so to get started, the first thing we're going to want to do is to get a model. I downloaded this one from Sketchfab. It was free. Uh, this is a uh, S10 pickup truck. I used to have one like it, so I kind of um, you know, favored this vehicle here. And I decided to start with this one. It's also a good vehicle to... Um, give you sort of an example of how you can place uh, heat seat hot spots in the vehicle as well so your friends can ride around with you so i wanted something with a bed that they could get in uh, so we're going to start with that so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create an empty game object for our vehicle and the reason why i'm going to do that i'll show you real quick i'm going to first drag this vehicle into the scene here and you can see already i've got my vehicle there but this particular model has all of the pieces right up underneath that. Um, so what I like to do is I like to start with an empty game object that I can name and place all the other uh, pieces of the vehicle inside and keep it separate from my model. So I'm going to right click here. I'm just going to create an empty game object and I'm just going to call this the S10 uh, pickup. And that's all for that. Now that we have our empty game object created, the next thing you want to do is click on your model and go ahead and extract the materials by clicking the materials tab in the inspector and then going to extract materials, create a materials folder and then hit select folder. Uh, that's going to extract your materials into a local folder here. I've already done that. So these are the ones I'm going to use. Um, but just to show you how that'll work, I'm going to go ahead and extract them into a second folder. So I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to call it materials two because I'm not really going to use it. And I'm just going to select that folder. And that's going to extract those materials into this folder that I can now edit if I want. And so let's go back to the model. Now we're going to drag this model into our empty game object that we created. And you'll notice that if I click on any of the objects in here, I can actually edit these materials now. Uh, so you'll want to do that first so that your materials are editable. Uh, but now that you've done that, you'll see that you have your model in the scene and all of the objects here are going to be blue. That means it's a part of the prefab that you've just created. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the prefab and I'm going to unpack it. And you'll notice that all of these objects are white now. And that means that I can also edit them in the hierarchy. If you don't unpack your prefab first by right clicking the object and going to prefab and then unpack, uh, you won't be able to edit these objects or move them around, and that's going to be essential for setting up your wheels correctly. So go ahead and do that now. Uh, once you've got that unpacked, you can go ahead and collapse the model. You've got that in, uh, in your scene. And the last thing that we'll want to do to the scene in order to be able to test it is create a terrain. So right-click in your hierarchy, then go to Create 3D Object, and then Terrain. This will create sort of a uh, terrain collider on the ground that you can use uh, to drive your vehicle on. So we'll just move that for now. So that way I've got plenty of room to drive uh, when I go to test. And so now what you should be left with is your empty game object, which is going to be your, your parent object. Um, it's no longer empty because we dropped our model into it. And then you also have your terrain. So the next thing we'll want to do is we're going to select the top level object of the vehicle. We're going to go to the layer in the inspector and we're going to change this to vehicles. It's going to ask you if you want to set the layer to vehicles for all the child ob objects as well. we'll go ahead and change that. Um, next, we're going to add a rigid body component to the top level vehicle uh, Object. So that's going to be this S10 pickup, whatever you named yours. We're going to go to Add Component in the Inspector. And then you're going to type Rigid Body. And once it comes up, you select that. And here's your Rigid Body values. Now, the one thing before I get started on these values that I found helpful, you can do this if you want. Uh, you don't have to, but it's going to really be helpful the first time you do this, is to go into the spatial 
um, examples folder and you're going to find if you have the latest version of it you're going to find this golf cart example folder in here if you don't see that and I'll link it in the description you're going to want to go back to the spatial SDK web page and download the latest version so you can get the examples um, once you have that or if you do see it you can open up the golf cart and you can see that there's already a pre-built uh, prefab for you so we'll go ahead and drag that into the scene as well and now you sort of have an example to go off of and you'll even need some of this um, later so you go ahead and do that just place it next to your truck somewhere or your car or whatever you have uh, and that way we have quick and easy access to this object as well so we'll go back to the top level of our our vehicle here and now that you see this rigid body you're going to see that there's some values on the golf cart as well um, for the rigid body that you can sort of use it as an example so the mass of the rigid body just simply means um, in kilograms, uh, what is the the weight of the vehicle? And so uh, I'm sure that you know you can make it as accurate as you want, but with 1500, uh, the same as this cart, it, it sort of works. So we're just going to grab um, these values here by just clicking these three dots on the right side of the rigid body component for the golf cart. We're going to actually copy the component, and then we're going to go back to the vehicle that's ours we're going to click the same three dots and then we're going to just hit paste component values that's going to automatically grab those values from the golf cart and place them here you can now edit this if you want so if you want to make it heavier or lighter you can do that if you want to edit your drag or your angular drag you can do that uh, but what's also important is to leave these values here alone um, one of the things i found is that if if you leave this set to none the vehicle sort of seems like it's jumping around uh, really rigid and everything when it's moving around uh, and so leaving these values here will make sure that you have a smooth moving vehicle all right um, the next step that you'll want to do is you'll want to place an empty game object for the driver's seat position to do this you'll right click the top level of your vehicle uh, and then you're going to see these options here we're going to create an empty object here and then we're going to just name it driver's seat okay now what this is going to do is place an empty object you can see there's really nothing on it um, but you can see if we've got the move tool selected then now i can move that so i'm going to just kind of go into the interior of the vehicle here and you can see that now i can see where this object is and you may want to move around and get different perspectives here to make sure it's exactly where you want i kind of want it to be um, somewhere in the middle of the seat obviously uh, and I also want it to be lined up in front of the window properly. And so you can just do best effort here. Do a little testing once you get everything done. And if, and if you need to adjust it, you can do that there. Um, but just place it there for now. What's also important is you want to make sure this blue arrow is pointed towards the front of the vehicle. Uh, if that's your desired seating position anyway. Wherever this blue arrow is pointed is the direction that your character is going to be facing. And this green arrow is which is the where their head is going to be uh, sort of pointed. So if the green arrow were pointing down, they're going to be upside down in the seat. Uh, if this blue arrow is pointing towards the door, they're going to be sitting in it sideways, if that makes sense. So this is exactly the way that we want it. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone there for now. Um, the next step here, we're going to want to create a mesh or box collider for the vehicle's body. Personally, I like to do the box collider because a lot of the time the body is not going to be all one mesh. For instance, I've got a door here, a side fender, the bed. So none of this is going to be a good mesh to do a body with. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the top object here. We're going to hit add component and then I'm going to just select box collider by typing that in. And that's going to give us a box that's obviously not in the right place. So we need to edit that. In order to do that, we'll go to the edit collider here and click this button. That's going to give us a box with these points that we can stretch out. In order to do this properly, you're going to need to get to a few different angles. So what I like to do is get to the front of it and I drag the front, you know, I make sure I can eyeball it pretty good and that it's somewhat accurate. Same thing for the back. I'm just going to come back here and make sure that it's somewhat accurate there. Now I can get to the back of the vehicle. I can make sure the width is correct as well. And so you'll need to go to each side, kind of look. Now that's proper. Now we need to make sure the height's set. So obviously that's too low. I like to lift it up. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to hit Control-Z to make sure that goes back. Grab the right things here. 
and make sure that I'm getting this somewhat lined up with the body of my vehicle. Um, and I like the way that looks. So we're going to leave that just like that. So there's my bots collider. What's also important is you want to make sure um, that when you uh, hit the move tool here, that this bots collider uh, and, and everything else in your vehicle uh, typically is situated where this blue arrow is pointed towards the front of the vehicle. So just make sure as you're doing all of this that uh, the orientation is the same for all of your objects if you can help it. All right. So the next uh, step here, once we've made our bots collider, is to add a center of mass game object. To do that, you'll right click the top level object again, create an empty object, and we'll name this center mass. Now what we're going to do here, it's very important uh, for the physics of your vehicle to work properly to make sure this is in the right spot. Um, and so it's going to automatically create it somewhere down here in the bottom center. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise this up slightly so that it's actually uh, inside of the vehicle there and somewhat towards the center. Depending on your vehicle, to, you know, if you want it to feel sort of front heavy or back heavy, you may move that around. Uh, but for now, this is a good spot. So if you look inside the vehicle here, you'll just kind of see that that's, that's sort of in the center. Uh, so I'm going to leave that just like it is. Now that you've done that, the next step is to create the wheel colliders. Now I want you to take a, a step back here and understand this is the part that I got hung up on. Uh, so it's very important to pay attention to these steps. And if you end up with, uh, with your vehicle in the end where the, the wheels are kind of messed up, I urge you to come back to this part. I'll even put a, a link in the video so you can come back to it. Uh, but this part's really important. So to make the, real, the wheel colliders uh, properly, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that your vehicle has separate game objects for each wheel. So I decided that I wanted to group all of these objects together. So I went into Blender and I combined these, but that's totally not necessary. If your wheel consists of two or three different meshes, um, the only thing you have to do is to uh, group all of those different parts under one game object. Uh, and I can show you how to do that real quick. So for instance, if these two parts of the vehicle uh, were my wheel, if one was the wheel and one was the tire, I would just select both game objects by holding shift when I click them, right click it, and then create an empty parent. And that'll give you an, an object that groups them both together. I'm not going to do that for now since it's not what I want to do. I'm just going to show you how that works. If you're lucky enough uh, to have a model that's already got your wheel sort of in one object, that's great. Um, but if not, you'll need to group them. Once you're done with that part, um, then you're ready to go. So I'm going to start making my uh, wheel colliders. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object for that. So I'm going to collapse my model for now since I don't need it. I'm going to go to the top level. I'm going to create an empty game object here. And I'm going to call this wheel colliders. Inside of here, I'm going to create the first wheel collider and I'm going to zoom out. And see, this is going to be my front left wheel collider. So I'm going to call this one FL for front left. And then I'm just going to type collider so I know what it is. Um, next, what we'll do is we will click the add component button here, type wheel collider, and then select it. Um, and that's going to give us a wheel collider with some values that we can change, but for now we'll just leave them alone. What I noticed is that you won't see the wheel collider until you click the top level object that has the rigid body on it. Then you will see your bots collider and the first wheel collider. Now we can go back to the wheel collider so we can still see it. And you'll want to move this so that it's center over the wheel mesh. And so real quick, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here make sure that it's uh, somewhat centered on my wheel this way. I want to make sure that it's oriented in the proper uh, direction with the blue arrow pointing towards the front of the vehicle, as you can see. And then I'm just going to sort of eyeball it this way. Now I've got it pretty close, but one of the things that I can show you to help you sort of get really close is to click this 2D button inside of the, the uh, game window here. Now you'll notice that I don't have it oriented the right way, so I can't see it. So I'm going to go back to 3D mode. I'm going to click my top level object. 
And I'm actually just going to pivot this 90 degrees and then go back to 2D mode. So now you can see, I can actually see this, uh, this truck sideways. And since I was editing the left one, I'm going to put a negative in front of that so I can spin it the other way. So I'm going to double click this collider here and zoom into it. And so you can see now I can use the move tool uh, to get this exactly center. Uh, let's zoom in. And so you can see also it's slightly bigger, which in my experience I found that that's okay. But if you want to tighten it up a little bit, the way to do that is to just adjust this number here. So instead of 0.5, I'm going to do 0.48. And you can see that's actually pretty close. So I'm just going to leave that there. And you can see that I've centered, there's a, you can barely see it, but there's actually a cross here um, in between, or I'm sorry, in the center of the, of the circle here. So inside the wheel collider, I now have it centered over my wheel mesh. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this wheel collider uh, as a second one underneath the wheel collider's object. And that gives me a second one that I'm now going to name uh, BL for back left and then collider. Now from here, I can simply just right click and drag over to the left and just move this collider. Zoom out a tad. I'm just going to move this directly over. So now I know that it's not only centered uh, on this tire as well, since they're right, you know, aligned with each other, um, but I can get it centered here. So now I'm done with that, that side. I can go back over to the top level object, go back to a positive 90 degree. Um, and then here, you can see this is the same collider, but just on the other side. So this is the back right collider. I'm actually going to copy the back left one. I'm going to call it BR for back right collider. And I'm going to do the same thing with the front left one and make a back left. I'm sorry, a, um, a front right collider. So now I'm going to go back into 3D mode. And you can see that on my... front left and, and back left colliders, they're in the right spot. But if I click the front right collider, it's actually still on the left, but that's an easy fix. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the front right collider and we're just gonna move it to where it's actually on the right side. Again, it's already aligned for me so I don't have to do much work. Same thing with the back one. So now we're just going to double check and make sure everything is, is proper. So I got my front left collider and the front left. You can see that it's centered over the wheel. I'm going to go to the back left one, same thing, the back right, and the front right. So now I have all my wheel colliders created. Now here's the part that also is tricky. We have to go back to the wheel meshes now. We have to make sure that the pivot points uh, for these meshes are correct. Now, everything else in the vehicle doesn't seem to matter, but these wheels are very finicky if you don't do this properly. So I want you to really pay attention to this part. So there's this button up here in the top left corner that says center and pivot. This is where I messed up. I had the center button, uh, this is like center mode, uh, selected here. So what I really needed to be in was pivot mode. And you can see that at least in this model, the pivot for this wheel is actually way over here. So that's completely wrong. In order to fix this in Unity, it's a simple process and I'm going to teach you how to do it right now. Um, so the only thing that we need to do is we first need to create uh, an empty game object for our wheels. So that's easy enough. We'll just right click the, the truck model. Uh, we'll go to create empty and we're just going to name this wheels. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to grab all of the wheel objects and just drop it into there. And we're going to go ahead and rename them so we know what they are. Um, and so this one is going to be my front left wheel. So I'm going to name this one uh, front left, and then I'm just going to name it mesh. So I know that's the mesh. I'm going to move it into the wheels uh, object there. Same thing for the back left one there. I'm going to name that BL mesh and move that into the wheels. Same thing here, back right. 
move that into my wheels object. Next, the front right. I'm going to move that in there. So now I have all my wheels uh, in one little group, so they're all kind of easy to find. Now here's the important part. We're going to create in the wheels object, we're going to create a new empty. And we're going to call this one front left pivot. This is where we're going to edit the pivot point uh, for the front left wheel. So let's get over here and I'm going to show you real quick. Now you see this game object is all, all, all the way in the center here. We're going to want to move this to the center of the wheel. And so again, I'm going to show you if we go into 2D mode, then we can spin this truck around perfectly so that we can see everything the way that we want to see it. So I'm going to go to the front left of it here, go to my front left pivot object, and then hit the move tool so I can see where it is. And now I can perfectly line up this pivot point with the very center of the wheel. Now that I have that done, I'm going to take my front left mesh and I'm going to just move it to make it a child object of this one. So now what that's going to do is it's going to create a pivot point for this mesh using this object. Otherwise, if you weren't, if you didn't do this, then this wheel would actually spin around because its pivot point was in the middle of the the uh, the vehicle here. That was the problem that I continued to have. And if you're having a problem similar to that, then this is more than likely your issue. You need to set up pivot points for your wheels and that will fix it right away. Um, and so hopefully you're watching this video before you go that far and this will get you all fixed up. So now that I've got my pivot point uh, in here and I've got my mesh set up. I need to just do the same thing for the rest of these wheels. I'm going to go to the back left. I'm going to create a new object inside wheels. I'm going to name this the back left pivot. And then I'm going to move that into the center of this wheel. Again, making sure that this blue arrow is pointed towards the front of the vehicle. Now that I have that done, I'm going to move the back left mesh into the back left pivot. We're going to spin the truck around so I can see it from the other side. And we're going to do the same thing again for the other wheels. So I got my back right mesh. I need to create a back right pivot. I'm going to move that object into the center of the wheel. In the center, if I didn't say that already, is just where this 90 degree intersects here. You just want to make sure that's as close to the center of the wheel as possible. I'm going to move that into that object there. And lastly, we have the front right. I'm just going to right click, make one last game object. We'll call it FR Pivot. I'm going to move it. And then I'm going to place that game object inside of it. And so now I have all of my wheel meshes set up properly with their pivot objects as a parent of the actual mesh. And I also have my wheel collider set up. So now my wheels are finished. Next, we're going to add the interactable objects to our vehicle. This is what starts and stops the driving part of the vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the top level. We're going to go to spatial and then we're going to hit interactable. You can name this one start interactable. You can copy and paste it and then name the other one stop interactable. You don't actually have to um, configure these any. They don't need any special settings. You can change what it says here to drive or get out or you can take it out altogether. Whatever you put here is still going to say on the button. But the important part is to make sure that on your stop interactable that it is not active when it starts. In order to set it as inactive, you're going to right click the stop interactable and you're going to hit toggle active state. That's just going to make it look gray right here, which means that it won't be active when we load the scene. Uh, and that's what we want. Um, the next part after that is we're going to add a variables component 
to our vehicle. So I'm going to click the top level here. I'm going to go to add component and type variables. And that's going to give me a blank variables component. Now remember when we added the golf cart earlier? Now you can click that. We're going to go to the variables component on the cart. We're going to click the three dots here. We're going to go to copy component. We're going to go back to our vehicle. Then we're going to click those three dots next to the variables on our own vehicle. And we're going to hit paste component values. Now you can see that we have all the values from the cart on our own vehicle now. The next part, we're going to want to create all of these variables as our own from our own vehicle. Now one thing I noticed that was not in the spatial instructions that was on the example was a camera target. Um, and so from what I understand, uh, whenever you're driving the vehicle, there's a distinctive place on the vehicle that the camera sort of looks at while you're driving, even if you sort of pivot around. And that's what this object is. So before we do anything else here, I'm going to create one more game object in here under the, uh, the parent object here, create an empty, and I'm going to call it camera target. And I'm just simply going to, I'm going to go back into 3D mode here. I'm simply going to move this just to sort of the front of the vehicle. I don't like to try to put it off to the driver's side a little bit and then maybe towards the driver's seat. And the reason why I do that is because if I'm trying to take a video shot of myself driving and I go sideways like this, I kind of want to point it at the center of the vehicle, not really at the front. So I, I enjoy putting it about right here. Uh, now that's totally up to you. And if you got a different vehicle where that might not work for you, then you may need to play around with it. Um, and that's essentially what that does. Uh, so now let's go back to the top level. I'm going to go back to the variables here. And we're just going to go down the line of replacing all this. So first we've got a driver's seat. So we're going to go into our vehicle. I'm going to grab the driver's seat and just drag that into there. That's my object. And you can confirm that by clicking it and making it highlight over here, making sure that's yours. Um, <clears throat> next, we'll go to the, the, the uh, drive interactable. I called it start interactable. So I'm just going to drag that there. Stop interactable, same thing. That's the same as the exit interactable. Uh, next, we're going to go down to the wheel colliders. So you can see here's all my colliders. Front left, I'm going to drag that there. Back left here. Front right here. And back right here. Now, it's important that you make sure that no matter what order it is here, that you match the order that was here. So if you didn't do that right, then control Z your way back and make sure you do it right this time. Um, center of mass. We created that earlier. We're just going to drag that into here. Now you have your wheel meshes. This is important. So we're going to go back to the model and where we created these wheel pivots earlier. We want to move the pivot object into these transforms here. So front left pivot, we're going to move here. The back left pivot here. Front right pivot here. And back right pivot here. And you'll see I kept the same order that they had on there from before. Um, and you'll want to make sure that you do the same. So we'll go to the camera target that we just made. Um, I'm going to go back up to here and collapse the model. Grab camera target. I'm going to stick that in there. And then one last thing I forgot to, to mention, we've got these sounds. So in order to get the sounds, just go to your example cart, right click where it says sounds, hit copy, then go to your vehicle, right click the top level object and hit paste as child. That's going to give you all your sounds and everything that you need. Um, so now we're going to go back to the variables and we're just going to make sure that we drag those sounds from our vehicle onto here. So engine sound, We'll match it up here, start sound, stop sound, and honk sound. Now, it's also important to keep in mind, if you click these, it'll take you to your sound, and you can actually look at uh, what's going on here. So what, what it's doing is it's playing this sound, and that's what it sounds like. So you can replace this sound with anything you want. If you've got a honk sound that you want, or you've got engine sounds that you'd like to use, um, then you can replace that here. I'm not going to cover that part in this video, um, but it's pretty easy. Um, all you would do is just go to the sound object and just import your own MP3 and then just replace it here. Uh, and it's as simple as that. You can also adjust any of these volume options here, but again, I'm not going to go over that uh, in this video too much. Uh, but now that I've got my sounds in there, I've got all my, my variables placed, 
and uh, I just need to do a few more things before it's ready. Um, so the next thing we'll want to do is we're going to go back to the top level of the vehicle. We're going to add another component here and this time it's going to be the script machine. We're going to click new and then you want to create inside of your project somewhere. I'm just going to keep it simple and keep it in my S10 folder uh, and I'm just going to name it S10. You need to create a, 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 uh, a script graft for your vehicle. Now the good news is you don't know how you don't have to know anything about scripting at all uh, in order to do this. Again, we're going to go back to our old friend, the uh, golf cart example, and we're going to click the script and its script graph, and it's going to take us to the golf cart script that we can open up. We're going to click inside this window, hit Control A, that will automatically select all of the components inside of the script. We're going to hit Control C to copy it. Close that, and then we want to go back to our vehicle script. So I'm going to go back in here and click that so I can get back to it. I'm going to open it. You'll see this is here automatically. We're just going to select that and hit delete to get rid of it. Now we're going to hit control V and paste all that into uh, our own custom script here and then close it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to edit anything to get this to work. Okay. Um, now we're going to go back to the top level object. You can see that I've got the script attached there uh, with the new component. We're also going to add one last component which is the synced object component. So once you have your spatial synced object component added, we're going to want to sync some of these variables. So first, leave all of this default. You just want sync transform checked here. We're going to add synced variables by clicking that button. And what you want to sync is the is controlled variable, drive, steer, brake, and is honking. Once you have these, you're pretty much done. So you can save your scene, you can go to your spatial config, and you see I've created a, a sort of a test scene for this, um, a space called truck test. If you don't know how to create a, a space in spatial, go back and look at one of my other videos, but it's really simple. Um, you just name it, create it, name it, and then make sure that your scene, your test scene or whatever you want, is inside of here. So I've already set that up. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hit test active scene and see if my vehicle is drivable. All right, folks, so we're loaded into the sandbox and oh no, my wheels are messed up anyway. So what I've learned is that the reason why this is messed up is because again, I don't have my pivot point set up. Now, even though I showed you how to do it properly, they're still messed up. Why is that? I'm going to show you real quick. Now, when I set this up, I made sure that everything was correct in the 2D. But if you were paying attention, you probably realized that I actually didn't set them up in 3D correctly. So let's go back to the wheel pivot points here. And then you're going to see that, wait a minute, they're still in the center of the vehicle. So that's why they're being placed off. So in order to fix this, and this is another reason why I wanted to show you in this video, if you run into these issues, this is how you fix it. So we can't move the pivot point so long as the mesh is still a child object. So since this is the front left pivot point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the mesh out by simply moving it as a child object under wheels. I'm going to move my pivot point to the correct position, which is in the center of the wheel here, and then I'm going to move it back as a child object under that pivot point. I'm going to do the same thing for the front right as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the back right. And then lastly for the back left. All right. So now that I've fixed my pivot points and I've shown you sort of a couple of things that you may run into, I'm going to load the test uh, sandbox back up and you'll see um, that I should have the wheels fixed. And if you run into similar issues, that's something you can check. Um, but for me, it, it took me 
a few days and some help at least to get that far. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll help you get it fixed if you're having issues as well. And as you can see, now that I got my, my pivot points corrected, the truck is actually uh, correctly aligned with the wheels and I can drive the truck around. Uh, everything's working properly and I can even drive it off a cliff if I want. Um, so hopefully uh, this helps you get your own vehicle put uh, into spatial. And the other last thing that I want to tell you is that if you want to be able to drop this vehicle into someone else's world um, so that you don't always have to include a scene with this, there's one last step that you'll need to do, and that's to click your object here. We're going to go into the uh, components and add one last component which is going to be the spatial prefab object so add that um, and then once you have the prefab object added uh, to it then you'll also need to go into the spatial configuration and create a new prefab object package and then and then just simply make a prefab for your object by dragging it into your project folder here and then assign that prefab to the field. I'll even show you how to do that real quick. So you go to create new prefab object, hit create. It's going to give you this field here. You can change the name. I'm just going to name this S10. Uh, I'm going to assign my prefab to this field here. And of course, we're going to need a thumbnail. Uh, I don't have one handy, so I'm just going to make one here by using the snipping tool. Um, I'm going to capture a picture of that. You hit save as. I'm actually going to go back to the uh, project folder here into the S10 folder. I'm just going to name it S10. And uh, the last piece is that this image, I believe, has to be 1024 by 1024. So I'm going to edit that really quickly. Doesn't look pretty, but it'll work. Uh, and then you just drag that into the uh, thumbnail spot, hit publish, and that's gonna publish my truck or my vehicle as a prefab object that I can actually drop into my space or someone else's space if they give me host rights. Um, and that will allow you to bring your vehicle creations into other worlds as well. Um, now, the last thing that I'm gonna cover in this, uh, in this tutorial that I haven't covered so far that's less about how to get the vehicle driving and more about how it looks. So remember, we extracted our materials earlier. I already had some of these materials built. Uh, so just to give you an example of some different things that you can do in here, I'm going to go just to the shaded mode so you can kind of see. And I've got a few materials that I kind of made. So I've got a car paint uh, material that I made and I'm just going with a black color here. I've got... Um, you know, another one that was green that I was playing around with. So you can see how you can quickly change this out. Uh, I got a carbon fiber texture that I made. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, a, a material that I made with a texture, simply one that I downloaded from the internet uh, of a you know carbon fiber or fiber texture here. So really simple. There's just different things that you can do to give your vehicle a little bit of a look um, to it. And so here's another rubber texture I got. Um, for the wheels. So I'll go to the materials here. I'll show you. Um, so here's a tire material I got, um, sort of a chrome material that I made for the rim. And you can sort of see, um, you know, the vehicle sort of coming together uh, as I place some of these materials on the vehicle. So um, that's totally up to you. However you want to customize your vehicle, be creative with it if you want. Um, but you can start off with any model you want, um, on Sketchfab or whatever, so long as it's, you know, decent poly count and doesn't kill people's computers, I think you'll be fine. Now, real quick, the last thing I'm going to do here is I went ahead and fast forwarded to this part here where I have applied most of the materials for my model. Um, and so you can see how I've sort of customized, uh, this vehicle so where I, you know I've got the colors that I'm looking for and all and the last thing that you can do if you'd like if there are any spots on your vehicle where you could actually have um, some friends or something get on uh, the vehicle some kind of way and sit on it then you can also do that so real quick I'm just going to show you uh, what that looks like I'm actually going to unpack my prefab again because uh, I want to go ahead and edit it um, and I can always make the prefab again 
So one of the things I want to do is I want to place a couple of seat hot spots so it looks like I have some people sitting in the back here. Uh, so the only thing that we need to do is we're going to create uh, two child objects of our parent object here. Uh, and it's just going to be spatial and then seat hotspot. So if you look here, we're going to have a new seat hotspot object. And we'll see that the blue arrow is actually pointed towards the front of the truck. So we're just going to turn it. Uh, 90 degrees actually we can just punch that in here exactly now use the move tool to just move the seating area for the seat hotspot there uh, where it's kind of right there against the wheel well and then what I can do from here is I can actually copy this and paste it back in there I can rotate it um, the opposite way and then just move it on the other side and so now it's going to look like i have two seats uh, in the back here uh, and now the last thing i want to show you guys is uh, one thing that i forgot to mention in the video earlier which is the wheel colliders also contain some values um, similar to the rigid body where you can put in mass which would just be like uh, you know your weight of whatever the wheels are so it's a good time if you want to go into your wheel colliders and edit uh, any of that on the example it looks like they had the the cart wheels with a mass of 200 um, so i'm just going to also add mine in there like that but you can play around with any of these values on, on the rigid body and the wheel colliders to kind of get some different uh, uh, performance out of your vehicle and you can also play with some of these variables in here as well um, and so one of those is the uh, max drive value it looks like in here. Uh, I've played with this a little bit and increased this by 500 or so uh, to give myself a little bit of extra driving uh, power there. Um, but I'm not going to get really again into much of the tweaking here uh, of these values because in a future video I'm going to go over these values a little bit more in depth uh, as well as how to make your vehicle float and diff some different things like that as well. So until next time, everybody, this is Metaverse Josh with another episode of Building the Metaverse. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with this week. Take it easy.